In the channel, I've reviewed a lot of high-end mini PCs that do have 45 watt processors and a lot of performance with eight cores, 16 threads. This here is a Jasper Lake mini PC. So it's low powered, a 15 watt processor, the Sauron N5095. Has a maximum turbo of 2.9 gigahertz, Intel UHD graphics and four cores. Now this configuration from B-Link, which is the U59 mini PC, comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and dual channel and a 512 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD. It does have gigabit LAN, it can run two displays at 4K60, and you are able to install an additional 2.5 inch drive to expand upon that SATA 3 M.2 storage. Now let's have a look at what we get in the box. Very small package. So there's a user manual here at the top. There we have the mini PC, and I'll go over the design of that shortly and all the ports we get with it. Accessories. So they have included this, it's a bracket, okay, for Visa mounting this on the back of a monitor if you wanted to do so. There are some screws, so both for a SATA 3 2.5 inch drive and for that bracket, and an HDMI cable, a short HDMI cable, so there's two of them, and our power supply. Now this one, it's rated to 36 watts only maximum. But remember, it's only a Jasper Lake in this, it's the 5095 so it doesn't need a lot of power. Back of the U59 here, we've got power in, two HDMI 2.0 ports, so they support 4K60. Unfortunately, there's no 4K120 support. I did test it, and it ended up being all scrambled. It wanted to do it. I could select the option with my LG CX TV, which does support 4K120, but no, it just would not run it. Two USB 3 ports, Gigabit LAN, and this is the exit vent, so all the hot air is going to be pushed out of this vent here at the back. Fan noise is very good, you occasionally hear it ramp up to a higher RPM, and then it cuts away very quickly, so no real complaints with that. Either side we do have intake vents, okay, so that's where it's getting the fresh air, then blowing it out the back. And up the front here we've got our power button, and there is a 3.5mm headphone jack with mic support there, a Type-C USB 3, and another 2 Type-A USB 3.0s. This right here is a little hole with a switch inside for our BIOS reset if you happen to mess up any of those settings because this does have a completely unlocked BIOS. So the housing and the top of it is all made out of plastic and we can see an Intel logo right there, B-Link's logo, and then the underside we've got four rubber feet and four screws if you want to gain access to the internals to add a 2.5 inch drive which I will show you just after this. There are two screw holes there, or mounting points, for that Visa bracket. The good news, we've got upgradable RAM here. So two sticks of DDR4, 8 gigabytes here, giving us a total of 16. This is our SSD, which does have a heat sink over it. So the wireless card is the 3165, that's wireless AC only. It should be Wi-Fi 6 spec that they use with this. And the drive itself, the SSD, is just SATA 3. And I'm pretty sure that this spec can also support NVMe, but we don't get it with this mini PC, which is unfortunate. They have also glued the antennas onto the wireless card, so it could be a little bit tricky to swap this out for an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200 or 201. And if you do remove the motherboard, flip it around, you can see the tiny little cooler it's got. It's got plenty of copper here and two little copper transfer heat pipes. BIOS settings, in typical B-Link fashion, we have every single option available to us, which is great. That also means you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble. Now you will see that listed down there is NVMe configuration, but no, it does not support it. I triple check this. I did test out some drives in it and none of them would boot. So it's only SATA 3 from the M.2 slot, unfortunately. RAM disk configuration, so that's handy for those that want to set that up. You can adjust things like the power limit, thermals, power and performance, but I'll be keeping everything, of course, stock so you know what it's like, how it runs just out of the box. When you first power it up, you'll be greeted with the following installation languages right here. So these are part of the Windows 10 home image. You don't need to install them separately. Now on first boot, you do have approximately 441 gigabytes free on that 512 gigabyte SSD. I don't know the brand of it, uh, but these are the speeds here. SATA 3, the reads check out for SATA 3 are the writes. They could be a little bit faster, but overall it's okay. But really 
they are missing an opportunity here not using PCIe 3.0, which would have been a lot better. NVMe drives, of course, much quicker than this, and it does support it, the Jasper Lake, so I don't know why they didn't use it. Probably something to do with, with cost saving is why they have not done that. So you'll find that it's shipping with Windows 10 Pro, and it's all activated and everything. Windows 11 support, yes, it's going to support it, okay? I've checked it out. So we've got the TPM 2.0 that needs secure boot, and the spec of it is going to be enough. Uh, only just, though, because it's not a super powerful mini PC. The processor being, of course, that uh, Sauron, the 5095, N5095. And you can see here, maximum speed of it is 2.9 gigahertz, and it does support up to RAM speeds of 2,933 megahertz, although I've just checked it out and we are running here for the RAM 2,666, even though it says 2,667. So it could actually perform a little bit better there. Uh, the chip itself is 15 watts. And what did I get here with Geekbench? Well, I'll show you. Nothing amazing. Single core score, just over 650. Multi-core score there, 2,107. It is only a quad core. It's not multi-threaded, so it's just the four cores. That's it. And really not a powerhouse. It's all about low power consumption. This only being a 15-watt processor. Now, general day-to-day -day performance, it's okay. Sometimes you see the start menu loads in a little bit slower than I would ideally like. So for spreadsheets, documents, your general kind of Windows work, it's going to be fine for that. This is really a mini PC for just basic media consumption, documents, emails, stuff like that. You wouldn't be buying a mini PC like this to play the latest AAA titles like Call of Duty Vanguard and expect to get 60 frames per second at 4K. No, it's not going to happen and you would definitely be disappointed. So things like that. Basic kind of documents and all that is running fast. So what about video files? Now we do have native VP9 and HEVC playback. We've had that since, well, since the Gemini Lake and I think maybe it was before that. No, Gemini Lake. So I'll start out with this is Jellyfish file here. 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10 bit. It's super demanding. And look at that. It handles it just fine with ease so all the video files that uh, you throw at it it should be able to play them just fine now a couple other things i wanted to point out that i did in fact install some faster ram i wanted to see would it support what intel claims and that is 2933 megahertz and you can see it is running that just fine so b-link have installed slower ram in this they should have gone with faster ram that would aid the graphics the intel uhd performance a lot now a little Chrome test here with YouTube playback. So I'm just going to look for a 4K demo clip. Uh, this one will do the Sony one. Okay, I'll just make sure that that is muted. I'll enable the stats for nerds and we'll make sure that this of course is in 4K and we'll see if it's going to drop frames. It probably will end up dropping some frames here. Okay, two, four. Occasionally dropping frames. But doesn't seem to be too bad, but that's not full screen. Let's put it into full screen. And there we go. It's steadily dropping frames there, although now it has settled down. Oh, and it's doing it again. So that's not ideal performance there. Is it watchable? Well, it looks a tiny little bit choppy there. Then just how many Chrome tabs could we have open and safely swap between them without it getting too laggy? Well, this is 10 at the moment or so that I've got open, well, approximately, and it's okay. This is fine. So you can swap and go through different tabs here in Chrome. We've got the 16 gigabytes of RAM and our CPU load at the moment, it did spike to 100%, opening everything up at the same time. And at the moment, it's not too bad, okay? So I'll just get this to stay on top. Should be there floating where it is. Going through these different tabs. You can see it's peaking at about 50% now and just scrolling through this. Some of the pages uh, do feel a little bit laggy. You can see we've maxed out the CPU here at 100% depending on some of that content when I switch between all these different tabs. So this is uh, not perfect performance here, but it's still okay. Counter-Strike, now I do have it set to 720p on the lowest possible settings, 
Frame rate not ideal. I've seen it get down to 20, even 18 frames per second, which is incredibly laggy and choppy at 720p. So you really probably want to have to run something like 800 times 600 resolution, which is terrible. Oh, and I'm getting shot at there. So this is not, I wouldn't really call this playable. So you want to, I can't really lower it down. Only the resolution is what I can do with this. And yeah, he got me there. Of course he did. So not good for gaming. Really, this is just spreadsheets, emails, YouTube, Chrome. That's basically what I would do on this hardware. Thermals, fan noise, and power consumption. So it only uses around five to six, sometimes seven watts at idle, which is not a lot. It's just sipping away at power. Maximum power consumption, what I've seen from the wall, is just 24 watts, which is, well, that's not a lot really at all. And it only gets up to 71 degrees Celsius. That's it. That's after benchmarking, gaming, stressing it out. That's all we're going to hit there. Uh, the fan noise, well, it's most of the time quiet, but when it is under load, you do hear it ramp up to a high RPM, which is slightly annoying, but it disappears quickly, which is the good thing. It doesn't just lock on that high PM and sit there. It will ramp down. What about our Linux support? So I did try to boot a live disk from the USB ports on the rear of it and the front of it, and I could not get it to recognize it. So I don't know what's going on there. Normally, this USB pen drive that I use with Linux Mint on it would boot on other mini PCs and laptops and I wouldn't have any issues. So that's one thing we're going to have to find out what's causing that problem if you want to run Linux on this. So as I showed you, the good and the bad about this, I think the performance isn't amazing, okay? So this is just for light computing. So as I mentioned, like spreadsheets, documents, uh, Google Chrome, bit of YouTube, and YouTube 4K, 60 frames per second, uh, would end up dropping a few frames. Now gaming performance, not amazing as you saw from my quick little test of Counter-Strike, that it's not great there. The thermals are good, so it won't go over 71 degrees Celsius. Power consumption is low. It idles around five and a half to six, sometimes seven watts, which is not a lot. And then it doesn't seem to go over and use more than about 24 watts. So it is, yes, a low powered mini PC here that is not going to be using a lot of power. If that's your concern, it's something you want to run all the time constantly with light tasks. Good things about it, well, it does have the unlock BIOS, which I really like. So there's a lot of settings in there we can tweak. So we could, uh, for example, increase power limits. There is a little bit of thermal headroom in there for that. You could also dedicate more RAM to the UHD graphics. That might help boost a little bit the lower uh, frames per second average. But I'm not too sure on that because really the UHD graphics isn't exactly a powerhouse there. Uh, when it comes to performance. So there's a couple of areas that definitely B-Link, I feel they, they could have improved upon. Right? They didn't go with the faster RAM. Now, as I tested it out, I put some of my own quicker RAM in this, and I could run 2,933 megahertz the RAM instead of the 2,666 with the RAM that they give us supplied in this one. We only get a Wi-Fi AC card. I do believe that now in 2021, all manufacturers, even in such a spec like this, they should be using Wi-Fi 6. It's cheap enough, the Intel AX200 or 201 card, which also comes with Bluetooth 5 support. And then NVMe. It's only a SATA 3 slot M.2, and I did test out and try to at least boot some of my NVMe PCIe SSDs, and they did not work, okay? So it definitely does not support at the slot there, and that's another missed opportunity because the Jasper Lake does support it there. So really, it could have been better than what it is. And yeah, I do find it a little bit disappointing. So if you want a better mini PC from B-Link, that's a brand you're looking at, do check out their SER3, the SER3 that I've reviewed in the channel. That one has a Ryzen 7 3750H, eight cores with Vega graphics, much better performance than what is on offer here from Intel's Jasper Lake. Thank you so much for watching this review. Do hope to see you back in the next one. Bye for now.